Secretary of State John Kerry stumbled a bit today when discussing the possibility of boots on the ground in Syria. He twisted himself into a pretzel with hypotheticals and ultimately ended up here. I know the administration has zero intention of putting troops on the ground. I want to bring in two former generals to talk about this. Uh, Anthony Zinni is the former commander in chief of CENTCOM and Michael Hayden is the former CIA director. He's now a principal with the Chertoff Group a risk management firm. I'm also joined again by Chief National Security Correspondent uh, Jim Shudo. Uh, General Hayden, we heard Secretary Kerry there talk about no intention. They have no intention of boots on the ground. But you really can't promise that when you're about to enter a military engagement, right? No, and you shouldn't try to promise it, Jake. I can imagine circumstances within a minute or two where you might have to do that. What if we use manned aircraft, penetrate Syrian airspace, an aircraft goes down, you have to send search and rescue after that crew, you put people on the ground. This shows the difficulty of trying to craft language that's going to satisfy everyone. At the end of all this, there's just going to have to be some faith and confidence between the President and the Congress. The Congress can't think of all the possible circumstances they might want to limit the President on. And frankly, the President can't live with very limited freedom of action when he's going to put Americans into harm's way. General Zinni, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Dempsey, we know he is skeptical of what force in Syria can accomplish. You maybe heard a bit of that today. I want to play this exchange. The answer to whether I support additional support for the moderate opposition is yes. And this, this, this author authorization will support those activities in addition to responding to the weapons of mass destruction. I, I don't know how the uh, resolution will evolve, but I support that that what you're support. seeking. What is it you're yeah, seeking? I, I can't answer that, what we're seeking. I can't answer that, what we're seeking. Was he trying to just stay in his lane? Was he further expressing skepticism? Translate that for us, General. Well, I, I think one thing he's trying to do is not make any guarantees as to what military action can achieve. You know, it's in the mind of the uh, leadership of, of the enemy. Uh, we're trying to compel him to do something. In this case, I think two things. One, to, to prevent him from future use of weapons of mass destruction, but also uh, to try to convince him he can't win this on the battlefield. I, I thought it was interesting what Se uh, Secretary Curry said today about this being resolved at Geneva, too, which led me to believe the strategy here is to convince uh, Assad he can't win and convince the Russians that we need their support. And there is a possible diplomatic solution with an interim government. And I think General Dempsey is being smart to, to ensure that no one thinks he can guarantee a military act will achieve these, these kinds of objectives. I want to bring in Jim Shudo now. General Hayden, it seemed that the administration had something for both the hawks and the doves, for the skeptics and the supporters, for the skeptics, hard limits on scope and duration of any military action there. For the, for the hawks, those pushing for more action, uh, he talked about a broader strategy, uh, support for the opposition, even connecting it to the ultimate goal of removing, uh, not with this particular military action, but still removing Assad from power. That's a difficult needle to thread. We saw the difficulty he had with the question of boots on the ground. Can he, can the administration thread that needle? Uh, it's going to be very, very hard, as you suggest. I mean, these are severable steps, all right? The administration has articulated what it is they want to do to be about chemical weapons and deterring and degrading their use. That may have some marginal impact on Assad's overall military power, but as General Zinni suggests, there's no one in uniform going to suggest this is going to drive him to a new political position. Mm. There was also this uh, tense exchange between Secretary Kerry and Senator Rand Paul about whether or not this military action should be called a war. You got three people here who have been to war. You got John McCain who's been to war. There's not one of us who doesn't understand what going to war means, and, and we don't want to go to war. I just don't consider that going to war in the classic sense of coming to Congress and asking for a declaration of war and, and training troops and sending people abroad and putting young Americans in harm's way. That's not what the president is asking for here. General, do you want to speak of that all to that? Uh, no, not really, Secretary. Thank you for offering. <laughs> General, General Dempsey, again, with a little re reluctance to, to play in the political realm of this. But is, is, is Secretary Kerry right? Is this not war? Look, 
it's a relative term, but I'll give you my personal thought. Okay, making a political decision to, on a relatively significant scale, scale, to kill people and break things in someone else's country, that sounds like war. The laws of armed conflict will apply to what it is we do here. Jim, very quickly, if you want to ask uh, General Dempsey. Just for General Zinni, the administration and General Dempsey has made the claim that a delay does not matter for the military effectiveness of this strike. General, do you believe that? I do. I, I think there's plenty of targets that we can service there. Uh, many of them are fixed. He doesn't have robust, uh, redundant systems. Uh, he can move some people around and a few things around. But remember, he's also in a war himself. He doesn't have many options and that much freedom of movement. And the intensity of our intelligence collection, which I'm sure General Hayden could speak to much better than I can, uh, allows us to do this continuous targeting. So I do think General Dempsey's right on this. I, I might add on that last question about war. Uh, when you attack a sovereign, a sovereign nation, that's an act of war. Uh, we, ha you know, we haven't declared war since World War II, but we fought in plenty of them since those, and I can remember Vietnam quite vividly. Indeed.